How's it going guys? We're back with another Skyrim skill series episode and today is going to be one-handed. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come over to the Guardian Stones and click the Warrior Stone so that our one-handed skill progresses 20% faster. And I'm not going to be going through absolutely every single one-handed weapon in every category in the smithing category because the video would drag out if you want to get your smithing up. I have a video for that on my channel. But anyways, my favorite three in the smithing category is the ebony set. That's a mace in the right hand, sword in the left hand because what's in your left hand determines the swing speed. Also, we have the Stalrim Mace and Sword introduced with the Dragonborn DLC. You can go to the Island of Solstheim to get those. And then Daedric Smithing. Now, if you can make Daedric weapons, then I would recommend to boost your one-handed. You do, but any set will do for one-handed weapons, I mean. And then just after Daedric, we have Dragon Armor and Dragonbone Weapons. And I absolutely love the Dragonbone Sword. It's probably my favorite looking sword in the game. It's always the one that I use when I enchant and make the best sword, which I will be doing at the end of this video. But anyways, right now we're headed over here to South Shriekwind Basin. And this is to get the first word of Elemental Fury, and that is for two reasons. One, to boost, and the second reason is because you need Elemental Fury in any one hand builds. No ifs, ands, or buts about that one. So come in here, make your way all the way up to the top, and grab the first word. And then after that, we are headed over here to Dragon Tooth Crater, and this is for the second word of Elemental Fury. Come over here, defeat the dragon, la la la. And then after that, you're going to want to come over to just near Solitude. There is the statue of Meridia, and this is for the third and final word of elemental fury there is a sword here which we are going to be getting a little later in the video just not yet for now we're just grabbing elemental fury three out of three and this is just to get our one handed up okay so after you have all three of those shouts then you know what to do boom 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 And now we are headed over here to Windhelm because the absolute fastest way to get up one and two handed is to attack Shadow Mirror. So if you have Shadow Mirror, great, you can skip this part. If not, then you're going to want to come over here and I'm just quickly showing how to join the Dark Brotherhood. You run over here to this house, come inside and talk to this boy. Aventus Artino. And after you talk with him, he will set you on the right track to the Brotherhood, and you're going to be on the quest, The Cure for Madness. You have to be that far into the Dark Brotherhood quest line, and then Astrid will give you Shadow Mirror. Now, every moment counts, so I want you to take my horse. His name is Shadow Mirror. You'll find him outside by the pool. Okay, and then this is the best horse in the game. So, meet our new found friend. And then just get up real close and mount that horse so that he knows he belongs to you. Before you give him the worst beating of his entire life. Okay, now you're going to want to use Elemental Fury. Also make sure your difficulty is on Adept, guys. Because any more than Adept, you do less damage and they just have more health. So, Adept difficulty, Mace in the right hand, Sword in the left hand, whatever one you have is fine. When it comes to the rate of progression for one-handed, it actually depends on the base damage of the weapon. So I don't have any perks in my one-handed tree, so it's going pretty slow right now. So if you put perks into your one-handed and make your weapons do more damage, you will progress faster. So, just so you know. That's why it goes a little slower for you at the beginning and gets faster as you go along. So I got my one-handed up to 62. So I'm leaving out the Adept Trainer, but anyways, once you get your one-handed up to level 70, I'll quickly show you which trainer can get you from level 70 to 75. You're going to want to come into White Run up near the Companions. He is one of the Companions, and it is Aethys. And he can train you from 70 to 75, and it will set you back about 11,000 gold. You do not have to do this. I just wanted to show it in case anybody wanted to do it the fast way. But hitting Shadowmere is the freeway. Alright, and now we're going to be throwing some perks in here. Armsmen to make our one-handed weapons do more damage. 
and then dual fury to make our swing speed 35% faster and then moving up here dual wielding power attacks do 50% bonus damage we're going to get fighting stance attacks with one handed weapons cost 25% less stamina bone breaker to make maces ignore armor and then bladesman to make swords do more critical damage then right over here hack and slash which makes axes do bleeding damage and then up here savage strike which allows you to do 25% bonage damage with power attack and give you a chance to decapitate people just like this and also a chance to decapitate people just like this you want to put people down on their knees and cut their heads off in front of their friends well savage strike is the way to go then critical charge which allows you to do this move while you're running so you sprint and then hold down the power attack move and you can do that definitely a good one to have and then that's it for now so after that you're going to want to just keep Attacking Shadow Mirror again and again until you get it up to 85 and then once you get it to 85 I'm just gonna show you the master Trainer and he is in Dusk and Yall. You do have to be friendly with the orcs to do this. I just want to say So you'll walk up and they'll ask you to find the fingers of the mountain and then once you do that this guy can train you, you speak to Borgug. And also guys I can't stress this enough. You do not have to do this. This is the expensive way. It is just the fast way so if you pay for it to go from 85 to 90 it will cost you 22,000 gold and then after that we can get five out of five armsmen and the other bone breaker bladesman and hack and slash perks now we only have one perk to go and then just keep giving it to shadow mirror boom 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 sorry buddy trust me the ends justify the means and then once we get it to 95, then I'm going to be showing five skill books. Now, the first is in Morthal. You're going to want to come here. And just over the bridge is this one house all by itself. Come on inside. And just over here, hidden in this bucket like Bethesda loves to do, is the first out of five one-handed skill books. Boom. And now we're coming over here to the very far corner of this lake, an unnamed location where this person is fishing and just inside their tent, the second out of five one-handed skill books. And now we're coming over here to near Riften, Fort Greenwall. And then you're going to want to come up the fort and run along the side and you will come into the captain's quarters. Take them all out. Ha ha ha. I like your outfit. And then right on the floor just near the chest, boom, three out of five one-handed skill books. Now after that we're headed over here to another unnamed location just near the guardian stones and there is the path and just off the path there's this little bandit camp. And just inside this little tent here, four to five, boom. And now for the final skill book, we're coming over here to this farm just outside of White Run. Beautiful little farm where I always grab wheat for my alchemy potions. And just inside this house, the last skill book over here on this dresser. Now one handed increased to 100. So we're going to grab the final perk in the one-handed tree, which is unfortunately not that good. Paralyzing strike, and when you move backwards and do your power attack, you have a chance to paralyze people for two seconds. Too bad it's not moving forward power attack, because that would have actually been useful. And now guys, for the first sword on our list, we're coming back to the Statue of Meridia. And if you have not somehow found this ball then she will send you to find it. But I seem to find it on my own every time before I even make it here, no matter how many playthroughs I do. Never ran from a dragon like that before, Meridia. It is time for my splendor to return to Skyrim. Shut up, Meridia. Ah! Okay, guys, now, once you've listened to her bitch, then just run over here, go inside the temple, and... Make your way all the way down. This is not exactly an easy fight, so just be careful and be ready. You're going to want to come and kill this necromancer. 
His soul's going to come up, kill his soul. And then after that, we're going to be getting two Dawnbreakers. Now, there is a chance that it will just fall out on the ground for you just like this, like it did for me this time. And if it doesn't just be on the ground automatically, then you need an area of effect spell. So you just hit it with something like Fireball and it should just flop out at your feet. Pick the one up on the ground and then pick the one from the altar. And that is how you get two Dawnbreakers. And just like that, boom, two of the most beautiful swords in the game. And they have a chance at making undead explode and send other undead fleeing. So definitely one of the coolest swords. And now we're headed over here to Markarth. And this is for the best weapon, one-handed weapon in the game that you can actually find, aside from something that you could make, which is the Mace of Molog Ball. So right near the entrance of the city, this guy's going to be just outside this house, and he's going to ask you for your health. And then you will start the House of Horrors. Once you make your way inside, slaughter him without mercy. Cut his head off. Haha. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Your reward is waiting for you, mortal. Further down. And then just make your way all the way down and talk to Molog Ball. La la la. The priest who did this to bend his knee. And long story short, I'm not gonna hold your hand through the whole quest. This priest is going to end up in here, and you just need to beat him to death repeatedly, mercilessly. I'm going to get you. You'll never surrender? Huh. We will see. Okay, and after you've beaten him to death, I think it's three times in a row, Molog Ball will give you this guy. Definitely the best looking mace in the game, without a doubt. And, yeah, so does 25 points of stamina damage, 25 points of magic damage, and also fills a soul gem. So... Definitely one of my favorites to always use in my right hand. Great combo with Dawnbreaker. Now we're coming over here to Skyhaven Temple. You will need to have reached at least the quest called Alduin's Wall in the main quest line. And just in this room over here is a unique one of a kind sword, Dragon Bane. And does 40 extra points of damage to dragons and 10 points of shock damage to others, but. It actually has a unique look that no other sword in the game has. It has a little shock wave emitting from it, and just a totally awesome samurai sword. See that little cool shock effect? Okay guys, now we're coming over here to Riften, and this is to get the best sword in the game, aside from something that we could make. It is called Chillrend, and it is a glass weapon, but it actually does as much damage as a dragon bone weapon. You can acquire it through the Thieves Guild if you make your way all the way through the Thieves Guild questline, or you can glitch into it and get it this way, right at level 1, if you would like. Now, the unofficial Skyrim patch mod will get rid of this barrel, so if you can't do this, that is why. But anyways, you want to hop up that barrel onto this roof, kind of carefully walk across this fence, and then jump onto this rooftop here. And then you're just going to want to make your way over and make your way up. Use those corners, guys. Use those corners. Ha ha ha. Victory. And then once you've made your way up top, just drop right down here. And then pick this lock once you make your way down. In this room here, there is a fake wardrobe. And then just come down here, and I'm going to just advise you guys to not touch anything in here except this sword. Because I don't know if it would affect quest stuff later on. I'd rather not find out. But anyways, come grab Chillren right here. And it is a beautiful blue glass sword, which does frost damage and also paralysis. And yeah, just looks totally awesome. The enchantment will vary a little bit depending on your level. So just keep that in mind. 
And now, guys, we're going to be making the best sword that I could possibly think of. And that's going to be a dragon bone sword because I love the way dragon bone looks. And then I'm going to throw chaos damage on it. So 50% chance of each element. And then also I would do either fiery soul trap. So it has a chance of those three elements and also burning and also soul trap. Or I would do chaos damage and paralyze. That's a super good combo. Or I would do chaos damage and shock damage so that on top of the three elements it does additional shock damage and also half as much magicka damage. If you want to find the fiery soul trap and the chaos enchantment then you can watch my enchanting guide for those two locations. And now guys that we've made the best sword and gotten the other four I'm going to be showing how to enhance them. So on a pair of gauntlets, a chest piece, a necklace and a ring you're going to want weapons and armor can be improved 25 percent better so make sure it's on those four pieces and then also to push it even further we can have a fortify smithing potion and then once you wear that suit and drink that potion then you want to click the wheel and then you can fortify these to extreme amounts like it's just insane so really these are the best one-handed weapons you could possibly have. And then on top of having that and making all those, you can also have four pieces, a necklace, a ring, boots, and gauntlets, which make our one-handed attacks do 40% more damage to push the damage even further on those weapons. So chill rend, 321 damage. That's insane. A Daedric Dagger, 112 damage. Both Dawnbreakers, 200 damage. And then, yeah, Dragon Bane, 314. Dragon Breath, the one that I made, 321, on top of the crazy enchantment. And then, finally, the Mace of Molag Ball, 231 damage. And one final thing I wanted to show you guys. Elemental Fury, you can't use it on enchanted weapons, right? Wrong. If you have an enchanted one-handed weapon in your right hand and an unenchanted dagger in your left hand, you can still use Elemental Fury with an enchanted weapon. And this is basically the most overpowered thing you could possibly do. It's just absolute insanity. Like, look how fast you kill people. Boom, boom. Whoosh, whoosh. Done. In one second. In one second. And I don't know why no one else has ever talked about that. I've never heard anybody say that you could use Elemental Fury with an enchanted weapon in one hand. But anyways, guys, that's it for this video. If you like the content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.